naive Gauss elimination. So let's say we have an AX equals B and we want to solve this. This is where naive Gauss elimination comes in. And this is probably the simplest and most straightforward method for solving this system of equations. Now, while very simple, we have to admit that this can actually go unstable and not work. And that's because one of the steps we're going to do is divide by a diagonal element. Well, if one of those diagonal elements is zero, it'll crash. And so there's what's called pivoting, where we start swapping things around so that we don't suffer from that problem. But this is called naive because the naive algorithm ignores the whole pivoting thing. We're going to assume that's not a problem and just solve this. I will also mention that we sort of already implemented the naive Gauss elimination. We weren't doing this in terms of matrices, but when we first solved this system of equations algebraically, you'll see some common themes pop up when we solve it here. And that essentially was naive Gauss elimination. The, the math, you'll see some commonalities. So let's get into it. We're gonna start with a matrix equation. It's a three by three equation. Let's say we would like to solve that. Well, what we wanna do first is eliminate X1 from the second and third rows. And the way we'll do that is first of all, we're gonna take this entire row, divide by A11, which is what you're seeing up here. We're dividing by A11, so we normalize the row. That'll put a one in this position. That makes it really easy to figure out what we need to do so that we can subtract this equation from rows two and three so that we get zeros in these positions. And in fact, that's what these constants are doing. So we'll take the old row two, we'll take row one, multiply it by this constant. And when we subtract, we get a zero in that first position. Same thing, new row three is the old row three minus row one times this constant, and that gets a zero in this position. Now we'll move on to the next row. What we wanna do now is eliminate X2 from the third row. And so what we'll do is we'll take the second row, divide by the new diagonal element, that's the A22 prime. That puts a one in this position, which makes it very easy to figure out what constant to multiply this by, so that when we subtract row two from row three, we get a zero in this position. And in fact, that's what this constant does. So the new row three is the old row three minus row two multiplied by this constant, and that puts a zero in this position. Hey, notice, that's a triangular matrix. Remember that. So we have this triangular matrix. Triangular matrices are almost solved matrices. Now it becomes really fast to solve this problem. Right away, we can calculate what X3 is, right? We just bring the A33 to the other side. It's B3 divided by A33. That gives us our X3 real fast and simple. Now that we have X3, we can use the second row equation to calculate X2. Given X2 and X3, we can use the first row equation to get X1. Very fast and simple once we have this upper triangular matrix. So here's where we'll note that. Upper triangular matrices, it's a natural consequence of Gauss elimination and Upper, I'll just say triangular matrices in general are almost solved matrices and it's almost always very, very quick to get a solution once you have that triangular matrix. So triangular matrices are huge in linear algebra for that reason. Another thing to observe, remember those factors that we used? We had an A21 over an A11. That was in our first forward substitution step. We had an A31 over an A11, and we had an A32 over an A22 prime here. So these terms will turn up when we get into LU decomposition, but they're constants that we calculate naturally from Gauss elimination anyway. So remember those, file those away in your brain, and when we get to LU decomposition, these constants, which are calculated anyway during Gauss elimination, will come up there. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. 
I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.